Watch out. Y'all move. I got it. Watch out. Coming through, okay? What's your name? What's your name, man? Lauren. Lauren. Gotcha. All right. Just a girl. Just a girl. Just a girl. Just How a girl. are you, honey? This we're is bolt cutters. This is our best. He's a paramedic. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to get you out of there, okay? Hey, you and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this video, we're looking at one of those not very nice men. Again, Todd Colehep. Yikes. Serial killer Todd Colehep murdered seven people that we know of between 2003 and 2016. He also had this really interesting, if that's the right word to use, habit of leaving reviews on Amazon on the items he used to carry out his work. Let's look into the case of Todd Cole Hepp, how he was eventually apprehended, and where he is now. Kayla Brown and her boyfriend Charlie David Carver were last seen by friends and family on August 31st, 2016. They were seen by surveillance camera leaving work that day. They had arranged to have dinner with a friend that evening, but they never made it. When their house was searched, everything was right where they had left it. Their dog, who Kayla loved very much, had been left inside without any food or water. It seemed like they had just vanished. Police had few leads, and they were never able to form a theory about what happened to them, or link any suspects. Then, the mystery of what happened to Kayla and Charlie got even stranger, when on October 2nd, months after they went missing, someone started posting on Facebook from Charlie's account. He was saying they were fine, and that they didn't want to see anyone. As you can guess, the posts weren't made by Charlie at all. Then, a month later, after tracking the couple's last known cell phone signals, investigators arrived on the property of Todd Colehead in rural South Carolina. The deputy who was there thought she heard banging on the property somewhere, and it continued to get louder as they moved to a 30-foot shipping container, and inside was Kayla Brown screaming. Opening the padlock to the container, inside they found Kayla, with a chain around her neck. She had been there for two months, and there was no sign of Charlie. Bolt cutter. Just hit, hit the chain right there, loose. Just, no, just right there at her hand, Brandon. We'll, we'll get it off. We'll get it off here. Cut it right here. Do you know where your buddy is? Charlie? Yes. He shot him. He shot him? He shot Who him. did? Who sh Todd Colehep shot Charlie Carver three times in the chest, wrapped him in a blue tarp, put him in the bucket of the tractor, locked me down here, and I've never seen him again. Okay. He says he's dead and buried. He says there's several bodies dead and buried out here, and he okay. says that the dogs will be ruined if they go looking because there's red pepper. We're going to step you up, sweet dog, because there's what? Red pepper. Okay. Okay. Tell the dog people yeah. that. He says no, there's pepper everywhere. Todd Colep was born in 1971 in Florida. Raised in South Carolina and Georgia, it was noted that he did not have a good relationship with his stepfather, and instead he often wanted to live with his biological father. As a child he was known to be aggressive, and was often cruel to animals. Early signs of a serial killer, just saying. I had to get rid of the anger. And nothing I did seemed to help. He'd throw sand. And then he wanted something, he would push him down and go get it. Colehep's mom says he used scissors on a school bus to get back at a girl who made him mad. He'd stabbed her in the leg. Not much. I mean, it didn't go deep. When Todd Colehep wanted a gerbil, he killed his goldfish. I just let him have it about chloroxing the, the goldfish. 
I said, what made you think you could do that? What do you say? He just looked at me and said, I don't want it anymore. He took a claw hammer to all his furniture and tore it up. Did he threaten to kill you? Yeah. He was tall enough and big enough that I wasn't going to take a chance. So I locked him in his bedroom at night when he went to bit sleep and I locked me in my bedroom. In 1983, Todd went to live with his biological father in Arizona. His first reported violent act was in 1986, at the age of 15. After luring a 14-year-old girl outside from babysitting her siblings, he forced her into his home at gunpoint, and then bound, gagged, and sexually assaulted her. Afterwards, he walked her home and threatened to kill her younger siblings if she told anyone about what had happened. Todd Kolop was charged with kidnapping, sexual assault, and committing a dangerous crime against children. He had a crush on her, and he wanted her to be his girlfriend. And Todd went down there and got her, and brought her home, and... At gunpoint? Yes. He did. In 1987, he pled guilty to the kidnapping charge, and the other charges were dropped. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison and registered as a sex offender. While in prison, he attended and graduated from Central College, Arizona with a bachelor's degree in computer science, and he was released in 2001. He then moved back to South Carolina to be with his mother. He was already a danger to society, but this is when things get even worse. In November 2003, Todd Colehep visited a motorcycle shop in Chesney, South Carolina, to buy a bike, which he apparently struggled to ride properly. When he tried to get a refund, the employees laughed at him and refused. He then brought out a handgun and murdered the four employees. Where's your emergency? It's at a Superbike Motorsports. Okay, what's the problem? Apparently everybody's been shot up here. This remained an unsolved case until his confession, which we will get to later. Todd got a real estate license in 2006 after lying about his criminal history. He then built a company that had a good number of employees working under him. Todd's public persona was that of a successful businessman, who ran an estate agent business called TKA Real Estate. He was described as a hard worker and good boss by his employees, despite jokingly threatening not to feed his employees if they didn't work hard enough on his website. But Todd didn't always present himself as squeaky clean. A business partner he worked with said Todd was strange, and he spoke of knowing where people lived. He also apparently saw no issue with watching pornography in work, and was open about his status as a registered sex offender. Though he did lie about the severity of the crime which put him on said register. Todd, he was also a huge fan of Amazon.com, and on his wish list on his account he would have, like, all of the items he would use in his crimes. Ballsy. Between 2014 and 2016, Todd Kolhep left over 140 Amazon reviews for items, including knives, guns, and tactical gear. And his reviews were absolutely bizarre. I think he thought the reviews he left on items would be taken as a joke by others, when in reality that's exactly what he was actually using these items for. For example, keep in car when you have to hide the bodies, and you left a full-size shovel at home. Haven't stabbed anyone yet yet. But I am keeping the dream alive and when I do, it will be with a quality tool like this. Solid locks. Have five on a shipping container. Won't stop them, but sure will slow them down if they're too old to care. Just a reminder that Kayla Brown was found inside a shipping container with padlocks on the outside. Todd also went regularly to the Waffle House in Roybook, where his behaviour disturbed the waitresses to the point where the male cook began to take his orders for them. One of the waitresses was Megan Lee McCraw Coxie, one of Cole Hepp's victims. Her body, and also the body of her husband, were later found on Todd Cole Hepp's property when Kayla Brown was discovered. They had been missing for a year. They both had been shot to death. After Kayla was rescued, Todd was arrested immediately. It wasn't exactly hard, she was found on his property. While we were here, all right? My sergeant served a search warrant on your property. Okay. okay. We have Kayla. Excuse me? We have Kayla in your property. 
She was locked in a container. Okay? She has told us that you shot and killed Charlie. Okay? So at this time, I'm going to need you to stand up and put your hands behind he's, your back. He's already killed. Under, okay. You're under arrest right now for kidnapping. All right? They're going to continue to search your property. They're going to continue. To bring, they got cadaver dogs down there. Okay? If you want to help yourself, tell me where Charlie's at so we can go find his body. That's, that's pretty much where we're at right now. Okay. Do you want to help yourself and tell me where the body's at so we can go recover Charlie's body? No, sir. You don't want to? No, sir. Okay. Why'd you shoot him? I didn't shoot anybody, sir. Okay, why'd you lock her in a container in your property? I'm just talking. She's on your property right now, locked in a container. They just got her out of a, like a, um, they call it a shipping box. Connex box. Connex box. She was locked in a container in a comment box. They got her. We are, we have investigators. We have like 20 investigators on your property right now. And they have found her in the comment box. So she never left your property. Okay, you locked her in the comment box. And she has told investigators that you shot and killed Charlie. Okay, so I'm trying to give you an opportunity to help yourself and help us help you find this body. Because Charlie, she's saying Charlie's body, you buried Charlie's body on that property. So you're saying you didn't lock her up, you didn't put her in the context box or anything? Probably a good thing. Go ahead and put him in the back of your car. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not resisting. Okay. Stand up for me. Will you stand up for me? Yes, sir. Come here, Taz. Kayla told police that Todd had killed Charlie, and showed her the graves of his other victims to scare her into submission. The first, like, two weeks I was there in the building, my ankles were cuffed, my hands were cuffed behind my back, and I had a chain around my neck. I didn't really even move for the first week or so I was there. What did Todd do while you were there? He would get there between 1 and 3 o'clock every day, Take me up to the main building, be me, make me do whatever he wanted sexually, and then he'd put me back in the building. And then he would always come back between so five and seven, take me back up to the building, beat me again. Most of the time, do whatever, get whatever out of me he wanted sexually again. He refused to do anything he wanted. I said no, he didn't force himself on me. He said he didn't believe in rape, but he made it very well known why I was there and if I wasn't useful, that I wouldn't need to be kept any longer and that he would shoot me. Did he ever tell you how many people he's killed out there? Story wise, he told me about four. He also told me that he walked into a few years back, that he walked into a bike shop at Anderson and shot more people and left, and they never found out who did it. He liked to brag that he was a serial killer and a mass murderer. He said he was going to kill more people because he had dreams of his body count being in three digits. He said, right now, I'm still high two digits. He said, if I was a good girl, he'd teach me how to kill and I could be his partner. Todd later confessed to the four murders in the motorcycle shop and to the murder of the Waffle House employee and her husband. Um, got there, um, not everybody was there, went and uh, sat on a few bikes, did my usual, basically stuff for time, and doing my best to make sure that the pain customers were not there. Collateral damage is not cool. <laughs> kind of funny. Kay would put on her paperwork when she was writing stuff out to me that she found a killer with a conscience and a kidnapper with morals, whatever the hell that meant. You remember that? Yeah. I just said, I did yeah, not. After she said, I spent a lot of time thinking, going, wow, kind of, okay. I cleared it in under 30 seconds. You what now? I cleared that going in under 30 seconds. You got a little bit proud. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you guys would have been proud. Have you killed anybody else in Spartanburg? 
No, sir. Have you killed anybody else in South Carolina? No, sir. Have you killed anybody else? And this is where I ask you this. Is that enough? Oh, there's a collar in there? That collar was Kayla's. Neck collar? Yeah, she had me order it. She asked you to order it? Yes, sir. Okay. A search of Todd's property revealed a lot of weapons. 9mm pistols outfitted with suppressors, semi-automatic rifles, and a hell of a lot of bullets. Because there was no record of a background check under Todd's name for the purchase of firearms, investigators believe that he likely acquired these guns and weapons illegally. Yes, Spartanburg County man Dustin Lawson has been indicted on 36 counts for allegedly lying on applications for guns and suppressors, and instead of keeping the guns for himself, selling them to a convicted felon. It's also believed that Todd has many, many more victims he just hasn't told police about. He even admitted it. For example, in May 2003, there was a triple homicide at a Blue Ridge Savings Bank. The police now believe Todd to be a person of interest. In 2017, he wrote a letter to the Spartansburg Herald Journal, which would have been his local newspaper. He wrote, Yes, there is more than seven. I tried to tell investigators and I did tell the FBI, but it was blown off. It's not an addition problem, it's a multiplication problem. Leaves the state and leaves the country. Thank you, private pilot's license. At this point, I really don't see reason to give numbers or locations. He was an amateur pilot, so it is very likely that he could possibly have victims all over the United States. On August 20th, 2018, Todd Cole Hepp told investigators he buried two more victims' bodies around NRE, South Carolina. This ups his body count to nine, again, at least. Todd said the bodies were near Interstate 26, and investigators brought Todd with them to look for the victims. Authorities are unsure as to who the two additional victims are. The search was reportedly ended the next day, August 22nd, after nothing was found. Who knows, maybe he was just toying with the police at this stage. Todd Colehep was charged with four counts of murder in relation to the motorcycle shop shootings and one count of kidnapping in relation to Kayla Brown's abduction. He was later charged with three additional counts of murder for the murders of Charlie David Carver and Megan Lee McCraw Coxie, and also her husband. Todd Colehep managed to escape the death penalty in a plea bargain with prosecutors and instead was sentenced to seven consecutive life sentences, with an additional 30 years for the sexual assault charge and another 30 years for kidnapping. That's a lot of years in prison, but I don't see a problem with that. Although his defense swore at his sentencing that there were no other victims to be found, Todd has since repeatedly admitted, as we have already seen, that there are at least a few more. As of today, however, he is keeping the details close to his chest. Todd Colehep was one of the absolute worst, and the fact that his final apprehension was similar to Israel Key's kind of a stroke of luck. If the police hadn't heard the banging coming from the shipping container, they may have never found Kayla and then arrested Todd. Also similar to Israel Key's, he demonstrated a just magnificent level of arrogance practically screaming I am a serial killer from his Amazon account, but it's online and well, he knew no one would take him seriously. It remains to be seen, however, the full extent of Todd Cole Hepp's crimes, and maybe we never will. He doesn't seem to be very forthcoming with more information. Oh, and most recently, in October 2018, the 95.6 acre property Todd Cole Hepp once described as his killing field has been sold. Strangely, the company who bought it are called Strange Properties No. 1 LLC. They paid over $700,000. I couldn't really find much information about the company, but their name is, well, quite literally, Strange. So who knows what they're gonna do with Todd Colehep's property, maybe put up a theme park there. Who knows? Thank you so, so much for watching, I really, really appreciate it. If you'd like to see some more of my videos, please uh, subscribe and let me know your comments on this case when you get a chance and if you feel like it. 
As always, I will see you real soon in the next video. My kids.